All right, so I'm gonna give you four subjects, like words, and you put them in order from least important to most important, okay? Training, food, supplements, drugs. Least important to most important. Training, food, supplements, drugs. What's the most important? The most important, it's the food. All right. I'm glad you said that because I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Kim, because you important. see so many people, man. If they eat clean without even working out, you know, you're like, man, do you work out? You're like, no, actually, I never. I run a little bit and stuff, but they look really good. Well, how's your diet look? And you find out the diet is everything. So you know, if you take drugs, you know, as far as let's call them supplements, you know, the supplements, the supplements, and the gear. Let's not call them, you know, juice is better probably. You know, you take that and you're not working out, you have the same effect if you're eating good, believe it or not, you know what I mean? Because you, we all know if you're on a sauce and you can start getting away with eating a few junk meals and stuff and it's still looking good. Uh, Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, Dexter Jackson, go down the list of all the names in the sport. We all say the same thing. Everybody who I brought on to this show and asked these questions has put food number one. If we're all saying it, why do the kids still think it's drugs? I don't know, King. King, I don't know. You know, I think it, it's so funny you brought this. Dana Lynn Bailey. Dana Lynn Bailey, she used to do shows never really placed. She's always out of the top five or whatever. Yeah. And then one time we hit her off. She was the, she was, you know, the MC in Alaska and I was guest posing in my prime. And she said, you know, I heard you prep people and stuff. I said, yeah. And I told her because, oh, I'm sorry. Branch was guest posing and I was with Branch. I was still competing, but Branch was, I just made him window uh, the Arnold. Okay. She said, you know, would you prep me, her and Rob talk to me? I said, absolutely. So I told her, okay, what do you talk and stuff? You know, I sent her the email and stuff. She said, George, I never took anything. I said, you being honest? She said, I don't take anything. I said, oh my God, you know, a woman looked like this good. And make the story short, I helped her. Listen, man, I swear on everything, Quran, Bible, whatever you want. That girl did not take nothing. She won the Tampa Pro. She went to the Olympians. She was the first Miss Olympia and physique. Uh, yes. physique. Yes. And she never took anything, not even clean butyl rope. And you're she saying that it was the food. You. It was just the food, and you taught her how to eat correctly. Exactly. Okay. It changed her whole way, the way she looks and everything. Everybody's like, oh my God, what is she, what are you taking? And she said, Oh my god, George. As a matter of fact, I went sometimes, you know, in a year uh, or a year or two after she won. I bet somebody 50 grand. I said, listen, we, we're right now at MD. We were talking. I said, I'll put a $50,000. You can get a test. I said, if you can't, you know, because we talk, we start with 100000 I said, I'll put a fifty. And somebody, <laughs> you know, the industry is knowing this. He said, no way. I said, dude, let's get her to test anytime. And, and then he started realizing. And then he sent me, you know, a, an email at that time. He said, you know what, George, man, I'm watching her year round. She looked the same. I said, exactly. She stick to the food. This is the most important thing. Food and training. Kai Green, Kai Green turned pro. People don't believe me, he was natural. I'm like, you guys, I promise you it was natural. That's why he went from 212 pounds to 300 pounds, you know what I mean? So it's, so, so we're gonna, if you are on this kick, George, that you wanna make bodybuilding a healthier sport, I think the number one thing that you yourself need to do, I need to do, all of us need to do is to make sure that these kids start to get the understanding that it's food. It's the food that does it. When you're eating eight, nine times a day, and you're eating quality foods, organic foods, and perfect food, your body's going to respond. You're going to, you're just going to come back to life. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I've, I've tried to explain it to these kids a thousand times, and it just drives me crazy. Um, okay, Athleticon. Athleticon, The Rock, do you think it's good for the IFBB and bodybuilding, or do you think it's going to bury us? What do you think? No, I think, listen, anything anything The Rock touches, man, turn to gold. That guy is so blessed, you know? I mean, since I worked with him, in, in, he's just an amazing guy. Honestly, people think 
that he's too good to be true, I know firsthand he is too good. And he is true. Yeah, he's a nice guy. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be a, a good mix. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if you heard, but it's, it's not going to be happening in 2020. Yeah, I think actually postpone it to 2021, you know. I think, gonna, what's to Olympics. be honest with you, I know they're going to make the big announcement tomorrow regarding the Mr. Olympia. I have huge doubts about that because what about the qualifications? See, that's what I... I keep going back to the same thing. People are like... Oh, man, it'll be over, and by the time, you know, December comes around, it'll be, yeah, that's fine. I agree with that. But who's, you got to qualify. How are these people going to qualify? So, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what they're doing. I feel my heart goes out to Dan Solomon. I know it's the toughest job in the world right now, but it just doesn't look good right now. And we'll, we'll all figure it out tomorrow. But uh, it's the qualifications for me. That, that's the one that's going to be the hardest thing. Of Europe. course, of course. They might have to, you know, I mean, if... If we got lucky and things open up for the next couple of months or so, I think it will happen to Olympia because then they can pick the top three like they used to back in the days, right, you know, right, to qualify. Right. Okay. You know, that way you can get some good crowd. Otherwise, there's only, what is it, five or actually seven people qualified because right. with the armor. Yeah. So there's not many people qualifying to the Olympia. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Next one real quick. YouTube stars... Versus real professional athletes. What happened, George? What happened to the contracts? What happened to, to, to us? You know, because when we turned pro, it was, did you get your weeder contract? Did Muscle Tech sign you? Did Pinnacle sign you? There, did MHP sign? What happened? And what, is it because social media is that intel and, and that powerful that right now, Mr. Olympia can't get a contract? I mean, what's going on? It's it's honestly it's very sad, man. It's very sad because people, like you said, there are just so many you know uh, YouTube stars and so many internet stars, and and it's sad, man. They really gotta calm it down and start, you know, start giving the bread to the people who really working hard towards that, that, that sport that we all love, that we all made it happen. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it, it's very disappointing to see somebody just do stop out of his mind or whatever and go and talk to the people and uh, tell them some crazy stuff that, you know, if I have a son, I'll, I'll, I would probably end up putting him in a prison if he does something like this. But you know what? They become so popular and so famous or whatever. And they're doing all kind of gimmicks to, you know, like, dude, I get every day, like so many people, hey, you want more followers? I'm like, listen, you know, when you're a good leader, you want leaders. You don't want followers. I said, I want to teach the people. If you are willing to learn the right way and how to make our sport healthy, you might, you're more than welcome to come and talk to me. Otherwise, I really don't care about followers. You know, like if I have something on my mind, I want to say, I'll go, but I'm not going to sit, you know, and post stuff so I can get more followers. So I can, you know, make money. It's not about money, man. Believe me, believe me, King. It's not about money because when I was in that, hospital many people that know me you know uh, they know that i'm you know blessed you probably knew because uh, bob but i had sold the company and i had millions of dollars and you know what none of these money came and helped me out man it didn't come out and tell me hey get out of the bed it's the prayers for all the people that care about me the prayer prayer for all the people that i helped or touched somehow and uh, you know, the, you know, my belief and and have my brain my brain in the right places. That's what helped me, man. It's not the money. So if it's if it, if it was about the money, like you said, man, we won't have Mr. Olympia anymore because it's disappointing with Mr. Olympia. You know, like getting you you, you win Mr. Olympia and you don't get a contract. This is ridiculous. It is it's a joke. It is a joke. You know, it, it is when sad. back in the day, me and you, when just for turning pro, we used to get a contract. So I feel bad for all the newcomers. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, and I hope that more of these companies look towards the the retcon ones, and they see, look, let's sign these big, humongous, freaky looking guys because, as a great man once used to say. And I think Dexter has said it too. Without men's bodybuilding, there is no sport. The bikini would die. The men's physique would die. The men's classic would die. People come to see the freaks. And it's always been like that and it's always going to be like that. All right. So let's put that aside.
A um, couple more things before we get to the speed round. Not, a lot of uh, hype and a lot of things have been happening lately as far as 90s physiques compared to now. Ronnie said, hell no. He, yeah, no way Brandon would even place in the top six. Uh, Dorian, no way, no way. What do you think compared 90s to now? You, you know, listen, the 90s, man, it was it was really amazing era, you know, and, and Super maybe freaks. because, like you said, there's more interest in the guys. I don't know. They were like more into it or something. But at the same time, I can't like I can't, you know, like discredit Brandon and say, oh, Brandon won't place in the top six. How would they know? This is not, you know, any intelligent person should make should make the right remarks, not make the worst remark that they made. Honestly, I was I was not too happy with what they say because hey, if you guys have somebody better or somebody as good as you, why don't you bring them? Where are they? Why don't you guys train people for free? You know the secret. Help somebody out. You know what I'm saying? But at that day, I say it and I'll say it again. Brandon won the Olympia. We right. can't take that away from him. You know? Okay. We can't take away. How That's would fair. we know? How would we know that Brandon, you know, uh, won't be in the top six if you never even get compared to him? You know what I'm saying? I was. So, you know what? The 90s was freak. It was amazing. I mean, you got the Kevin LeVron. You got... You get Flex Sean, Wheeler, you Paul Gillette, uh, right. Flex Wheeler, you get Ronnie, uh, King, I mean, uh, Sean Ray, there was a lot of people, yes. But you know what? We still can't, you know, discredit the kid, man. You know, okay. he worked hard. He made a tremendous gain. I mean, the guy, I remember, he had no wheels, man. And finally, between, you know, the Arnold, he came and shredded. And then the, the Olympia, he was a little soft, but he's a little bigger. Right. So you know what? Who who would you give it to? There was nobody there. You know what I mean. That's if what Dexter would have came in, looking probably the way he looked, you know, on Saturday, the way uh, instead of the way he came on Friday, flat and stuff. You know, probably he would have had a chance to battle off. Will you but ever make that? Will you? Guy, is, look, is that a mistake? The most complete guy on that stage. And that's how you gotta go. For is it. that a mistake? I don't know what would happen if I put him side by side him and and ninety. You know, in the nineties. I mean, Ronnie. Ronnie Coleman was a freak of nature. I competed with Ronnie. I was on that stage with the same year Ronnie, you know, won. And I remember looking in the back. I'm like, <clears throat> just like Bob said, you you and him start laughing. I was looking. I don't know who I was talking to. I'm like, what the hell is that? Right. He's a freak of nature. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but but uh, for Dorian to say, you know, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, I can get away with, with Ronnie saying it, but don't you, you can't say that. You won one Olympia with, with no biceps. You know what I mean? So you got, you got, you know, your time. Everybody has this time, man. Uh, last two questions before we get to the speed round. Will you, did you learn your lesson? Did you, is there a lesson that you learned at the Arnold Classic with Dexter so he doesn't come in flat again? Because I was rooting for him. I was sending him text messages saying, I, I'm rooting for you, bro. I know you can do this. If he would have came a prejudging the way he came at the night show, that show was his. I know, I know. You know what happened, Kai? I mean, a King. What happened is we we uh, we we were trying just to keep his stomachs flat. Okay. You know what I mean? I got but you. I'm like, dude, you gotta eat. We gotta eat. We gotta eat. And finally, when I saw him, he looked right on the money. I mean, you gotta admit it. When he came out, I'm like, everybody's like, whoa, stomachs tight, everything. But for the first time in his career, I don't think. I never seen Dexter. I worked with him for eleven years. I never seen Dexter flatten out, and he did slightly flatten out. Just a little bit, you yeah. know. And yeah. So, and that's what hurt him. But next day, I knew he was gonna flatten out. I said, "The hell with this. I don't care if your stomach is a little bigger. You're gonna go on the stage full. Yeah. I don't care." And that's what we did. We kept feeding him, you know, okay. the Chinese food and everything. But yeah, it looked he looked amazing, man. Okay, and I, I will never make this mistake. Perfect. All right, so last question as far as we're going to go to Kai real quick. If he does, and you don't have to say anything right now if he wants to, because I know Kai is weird like that. Uh, my personal opinion is bring back the conditioning when he won the Colorado or when he won his first Arnold Classic. And I don't like his most muscular pose. I think it makes him look smaller than he act, what he actually is. His most muscular pose is weird. Phil, that's the last pose that the last thing that the judges and the fans see, they want that, that shot should be boom. Do you agree with me or not?
Uh, I agree to some extent, but the problem, you know, King, is we, we took we took you know grades from the best people in the business, and we asked them, and they always tell us to do this. And honestly, I don't like that shot. I like the big, most muscular. Uh, you know, and honestly, I think if if you bring everything back, and we go back to 2014 and put them together, and this day. Kind of one easy, but at that time, man, it's just you know this is this is how the the the, the, the you know the cookie crumble at that time. I guess what are you gonna, gonna do? Is you know he I mean? is he coming I'm back? Is he coming back? Is he coming back? Judges, they were sitting at the Olympia, and they came and told us when we went to the Arnold Australian. They said, "Guy, we had you winning, man, but we just don't know. You know that's why it was like I think a point or whatever. But it is what it is now. You know it's in the past." That's why God gave us eyes in front of our face so we can look forward. Is he coming back? Uh, we're, you know, I'm going to tell you almost 90%. 90%. I don't want to say more than 90, but 90% Kai is going to come back. You know, this, you know, if not this year, it's definitely this coming year, next year, because he is he's itching. He is itching, not necessarily, you know, to just come and play, he wants to come and win. He wants to come and dominate. He wants because because he, he talks about he just want to be crazy again because he wants people to know that he hasn't stopped working, man. He's still working every day. Like I said, every couple of weeks he's still sending me pictures, changing his diet. So he's he's on it. He's Mr. On. Olympia or Athleticon? Uh, you know, Athleticon. So far, they haven't contacted us. Okay, they didn't. They didn't say anything. Okay, so uh, was was you know was some some cool stuffs happening. I, I I can't really talk about it because the reason why I keep calling you Kai because I just got off the phone with him. We were talking about so many things, you know. But uh, he had he had some cool ideas, man, coming to mind. And okay, something with pay per view and well, listen, him and Phil and Nick, so it's exciting. Kai, uh, he might be a weird guy, and he might Kai Kai is Kai. We all know that, but he did something for me. A few months ago, which was amazing. My daughter is a huge Stranger Things fan, and when I told her that I can get um, Sunshine, what was his name? Funshine. I can get him to, and he left a personal voice message for her, and she played it to all her friends. And I always love you, Kai. Thank you very much for that. You made my daughter's year by doing that. Okay, so Kai, that's Kai. All right, George. He's an amazing guy. He's a nice guy. Amazing guy. Speed round. I'm going to say something. You tell me the first thing that pops into your head. You ready? Ready. Okay. <laughs> Everybody says ready, but they're never ready for this. All right, so let's do this. <laughs> Bob Chicarello. The voice of bodybuilding. Good. All right. Jim Mannion. Amazing man. Okay. Insulin. No good. All right. Ronnie Coleman, 100%. Phil Heath, 100%. Who wins? Ronnie Coleman. Why? He's unbeatable, bro. So 2003, Ronnie Coleman against 2011, 11. 2011 Phil Heath. No, not even close. I don't think so. Okay. So I say, the same, no, I say the same thing. Chad said the same thing. A lot of people said the same thing. Okay. We, we're going to leave it at that. Brand, uh, Branch Warren, 100%. Big Rammy, 100%. Who wins? Big Remy. Why? Remy's a freak, man. A freak, Remy, a freak that can't win. 100%. Hold on a second. A freak that can't win. We're talking about Branch, who got second in the Mr. Olympia, has won the Arnold Classic. Remy hasn't done that yet. So, it's to me, it's Wait, like... Because he, because he had never been 100%. <laughs> you're saying how I'm, many times you have to get up on stage before you're a hundred percent, man? Freaky. How many times you have to get up on stage before you can be on? And how many coaches do you have to work with? You see, Don't you think that problem. that kid's a little confused? Okay, you just said it. How many coaches? If you go back and look, remember, I made I made him after the Arnold, when the Arnold in Brazil, and I took him, you know, to Prague. To Prague, he took second to Dexter, but arguably, he probably could have beat Dexter. But remember, he beat Sean Roden, he beat Dallas Wolf at his best, so he beat some serious guys. And then what did he do? He tells me a week later, he's leaving me. 
He's got to try Chris. I'm like, dude, you just beat Chris's guys. Best guy. So why, yeah, but why yeah, do you think that? What is that mentality? You know what? Rami is a great guy, beautiful heart. Definitely you need to work on this. What is the problem with these people? Not just the professionals, but a lot of the kids out there. They work with the coach. I know this personally firsthand. I go and I help somebody and they win an overall at a local show, a tough local show. Then they're like, I want to go work with somebody else because they might know. What is that, George? You can, can you explain that to me? Brother, I took a very well-known man right now on the circuit. I took him from not placing in the top five, National or USA. I gave him second at the USA. So what's coming after the USA? The National. So the guy who took first beat him. He's no longer there. And mind you, he never placed top five. So what do you do? Four weeks before the national, he leaves me <laughs> to somebody else. So what do you th you tell me? With it? And he won. And I went, oh, wow, great. Well, guess what? My guys kept beating him on the pro rank. You know, that's all the matters. I, 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 uh, there are certain things that I, I could say right now, but I don't want to start World War III. But, there, yeah, I get it, and I don't understand it either. All right, next name on the list, Hani Rambod. It's stuck up. <laughs> okay, all right. I, you're being honest, and I love you for it. Good job. Neil Hill. Cool dude. Okay. Potty Chupon, 100%. Against Flex Lewis, 100%. Not in 212 in the Open. Who wins? Uh, I think it's very tight. I like I like Chopin. It's conditioning, man. It's crazy. But uh, Lewis have a, a better flow. So it's either or, you know. From the front, I say hottie. From the side, it's pretty damn even. From the back, I give it to Flex all day yes. long. So, to me, it's the same thing. Incredibly close. And I think, to be honest with you, if the Olympia happens, that's the battle that everybody's going to want to oh see. Oh, my God. I, honestly, I'm the same as you. I'm looking forward for that. That's Masvidal and Conor McGregor. That's what, that's <laughs> what that is. I think that's the one everybody... All right, okay, so I'm with you on that one. Um, who's the real Lebanese lion, you or Samir? Ah, I had to throw that one at you. I had to throw that one at you, man. You Samir, know. Samir, 100%. Okay, you, you're giving it to the old guy. You Dude, know. he was Mr. Olympia. All right, all right, I'll give you that. The best I did is fifth. Okay, what <laughs> what show is a, is a better show? Arnold Classic or the Mr. Olympia? Not more prestigious, what is a better show? Uh, you know, it's hard, man. I mean, it's, it's hard, it's... Apple and oranges again. I enjoy the Arnold, you know, I say because Arnold of too. the way they treat me and everything. But now that Dan took over, he's treating us as a, as an athlete very well. So it's a toss up right now. Okay, all right. I say the Arnold Classic. All right, okay. Sean Ray, one hundred percent. Dexter Jackson, one hundred percent. Who wins? Dexter Jackson all day. Okay, I agree. Milo Sarchev. Insulin. <laughs> plasma expander. <laughs> okay, all right. Insulin and plasma. Hey, I didn't say it, Milos. He said it. All right. So, all right. So Wayne Demilia. Wayne Demilia. Wayne Demilia. Uh, he screwed me, so I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I say I bring up his name because he was just on Valuetainment, and uh, I think everybody saw that. All right, Milos. All right, Synthol. No good. Uh, real quick, I'm going to stop the list. Right, There's more on the list. I want you to really quickly, quickly touch on, for the kids, the difference between synthol, which everybody thinks every th all the big body parts are, are made out of, and sight injections. Please explain that not everything is synthol. It's it's big different, dude. Sight injection, you're still just taking a hormone. Your body's going to absorb, it's going to use... And, you know, it's, it may be a little faster uh, pace than, for example, you put it in the gluteal muscles because it's bigger muscles or in the shoulder. But if you put it in biceps and triceps, it's still you're using a real steroid. It's not going to hurt you. Synthol is crap, man. Synthol is just 
man-made stuff that, you know, is going to give you the uh, weird look. And some of them, I don't know what they're putting in there. It's permanent and it looked terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, that permanent stuff was called PMMA. That's what, um, oh, uh, which the, the Brazilian women are sticking it in their asses to get those butts. Now Body Moves oh, got their hands great. on them. And I think that's what Rich Piana is allegedly what he was putting in his arms. But we'll leave it at that. Hey, okay. Rest in peace. Yes. Um, Chris Aceto. Cool, cool guy. All right. Dave Palumbo. Uh, troublemaker. Okay. All right. I like that. Um, Kai Green, 100%. Phil Heath, 100%. Kai Green. Really? Yes, man. You really think? Even with that 3D Phil Heath look? You, you know, the thing is, it, 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 Phil is, Phil looks amazing. You know what I mean? But guy have some muscles, man. Like, you can't help it. When he's on the stage, you can't take your eyes off him. Anybody that loves bodybuilding, and honestly, and I'm just being honest with you, not because he's like my brother and he's my client all these years, but I love watching him pose, man. Like, everything about him. And, and I think he's, I don't know, something about his demeanor and being so humble and so nice, it makes you love him. Because I asked that question to, to, to many of my followers, and they all told me, can I? So okay. I, don't know, I gotta agree with them. I can't go against the people that they care about me. Okay. I, my, my response to that question will be, I would have to see them both standing next to each other. That's the, that's the only way to- Yeah, yeah, well, to. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, that's true. That's, you got to, you have to. If right. they're both 100%. It's going to be beautiful to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ronnie Coleman, 2003. Will we ever see that again? Nothing is impossible. As a matter of fact, man, I was really, 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 like, so disappointed to hear about, you know, Sandor Luke dying like this because he was the next big thing on my, you know, radar. I used to always look at that guy. I'm like, man, that guy is so pretty. Everything put together well, and he was growing. You know, we chatted a little bit at the Arnold, and he's such an amazing guy. You know, like, such a, such a bad loss, man. I, I really feel bad. I, that's definitely, that was the last thing I was going to say. The last thing, definitely our hearts and everybody goes out to Luke and his family and especially his kids. It's, it's a tragedy. I think that the truth will come out as the days go on and through exactly what happened when they do the investigations yes. and stuff. But I have a terrible feeling. In my gut, and I, I don't know why I keep thinking this, because I think the same thing that happened to Dallas is the same thing that ha happened to Luke. I think somehow insulin had something to do with it. Because when you start pushing that insulin to 20 units, to 25 units, to 30 units, uh, it's too much. You know, it's just too much to be able to eat. And, because I remember, I don't know if you ever went through this, but when I got over 300 pounds, and I did twice in my lifetime, 300 pounds. I couldn't even take a shower. I could not, in the shower, I had to I would wash my hair, then I would bend over and catch my breath to continue walk. I mean, I just think that it's, we don't know what happened. I just hope to God it's not another one of those more is better type things that took away such a, such a great guy. I mean, I didn't personally didn't know him personally, but I, I've heard nothing but great things about him. So it was my understanding, you know, speaking with one of his uh, good friends that they uh, they known each other before even Luke turned pro. I guess his wife uh, took the kids and left them, and because of that Corona things and everybody staying home, he was very very depressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, his friend, actually the same guy, he tried to get in between to to you know like get them back together mediate and i guess when they went to the house he was dead for a long time okay all right so we don't know we no, i don't know what i you know and but what i'm saying is insulin because he worked with chris acido and chris never ever like even mentioned insulin yeah i'm not the, okay <laughs> I, I don't want to say nothing about acido but i i just want to let's figure let's see what the, the autopsy says yeah yeah, yeah let, exactly. let, let's see that um, okay, last one on the list, King Kamali. King Kamali, <laughs> you know what? King Kamali did some amazing growing up. I'm actually, for the first time, I say, man, I like talking to King, you know, lately. Because I told, I told Bob, you know, we were talking, chatting. I said, man, King changed a lot. He's really, 
beautiful, down to earth. Because you came at a time, and you all came with age, like all of us, you know what I mean? It, one time I used to see your, your reaction with people like, I'm king, and you're not even a queen. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, you're, you're pretty cool. You're pretty okay, cool. I'll take that yeah, as a compliment. Good to have you as a friend. As a matter of fact, tell people how the whole thing started. I mean, you and I, we hooked up for this. What happened? You tell them. This is my interview. You tell them. I sent I sent King a text. Hey, bro, I hope you and the family doing good. Even mind you, a lot of people think that me and King were enemies. I never, I never have any enemies. Uh, but people think because King, you know, <laughs> always King talk. You know, he likes a little talking trash. If I was, if I was your enemy, if I was your enemy, I don't have a bad point in my body. I don't have time for this. I just wanna help everybody in the sport we all love, period. George, if I was your enemy, I would have said something to Dexter after oh, all yeah, these yeah. years, which yeah. I haven't. Yeah. And, and every single time uh, Dexter has competed in the highest levels, like the Arnold Classic or the Olympia, I was always the one who would text him and say, I got money on you, I'm rooting on you, I'm going to go on my show and predict you as the winner. And he would always, Dexter's always Dexter. He's very, very humble, and he's like, thank you, man. It means a lot, means a lot, means a lot. So, no, I don't have any problems. My you problem even text me and told me, you better bring him in shape. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, <laughs> I, I, Dexter, man, he's the – I said this before, once before about another athlete, Lee Labrada. Lee Labrada was the last of the 80s when he retired – and, and it was very obvious why he retired. I remember, and I, I remember talking to him, and he said, uh, I was at the Arnold Classic, and he goes, when I saw Flex Wheeler, and I said to myself, I can't. I was the, I was the sultan of symmetry. Now look at this guy, Paul DeLette, a guy who's 280 pounds with symmetry. So that's when he started, he stepped aside. Yeah. But Dexter Jackson is the last of the Mohicans of the 90s. Yes. He outlasted yes. everybody. So when Dexter retires, I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of tears shed because it's because of Dexter that people bring that conditioning. Because if they know Dexter's in the show, they're going to do an hour extra car. Yes. They're going yes. to do a I little told bit. Him that. It's funny. He was just talking to me a couple of days ago. We're chatting. He always FaceTime me. Georgie, this and that. So I told him, I said, you know, when, when you leave, man, the condition is going to go down. He goes, what do you mean? I said, dude, people got to, like, kill themselves to be in your shape. And and it's funny. After that, me and, you know, he was he was sad about, you know, Luke. Right. And then I told him, you know, hold on. Let me call you later. Chris was texting me. Chris, I see because I had asked him some question. And you know what Chris told me? He said, man, Luke was the funniest guy. I said, I know, just from knowing him. He said, you know, at Tampa, he told him I have good news and I have bad news. And Luke told him, uh, you know, what's the good news? He said, the good news is that I heard Dexter is not in great shape. <laughs> he goes, okay, what's the bad news? He goes, Dexter beat all my guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, listen, Dex, Dex, um, how can you not like the guy, number one? Number two, the yeah. only bad thing I ever could, any anybody could ever say about Dexter is Dexter has, he doesn't like negativity. Dexter's the type of person, and if you say one thing bad about him on Instagram, he'll ban you for life. It doesn't yeah. matter. Or anything negative. It doesn't even have to be bad. Dexter's a very positive. He's one of those guys that doesn't like negative reinforcement. He doesn't like it. Like there's some people that say, "Don't. I don't want to know. I look good. Don't tell me I look good." Dexter says, "No. Tell me I look good because that's what I like." Dexter's yes. a positive guy. So what you guys did, you guys did. The, I mean, you did your whole Batman and Robin thing. You know, George and Dexter. Congratulations on that. You did the same thing with uh, with Branch. Congratulations on that. I wish I, I you know, I, I don't know what the hell Rami's thinking. I know he's working with Chad now, and I, he looked really good at the last show. But to all those guys out there, to all those coaches, and this is something, the last thing that I would like for you to say to them, because so it's, it's not only coming from me. Stick with one coach. Fine, because if you can't just hit it the first time. It takes time to learn the body. It, it takes time Absolutely. to find out what Absolutely. works and what doesn't hey, work. You know from all people, you know... It, you have you need time to know the individual and stuff. But at the same time, like I don't like when people get mad when somebody leave them and stuff. That's why me and Rami were still like brothers and we talk all the time and stuff. Because you know, after all, we need to remember, man, these guys are adults. Right. They're not young kids. 
if he comes up, as long as he comes and tells you, hey man, you know, I gotta go to a different, you, you, you don't mind? I'll be like, no man, God bless you. The best of luck to you. That's how you're supposed to be. You guys, please, man, remember, I'm gonna say it and keep saying it again. We're only visitors here. I've been dead twice and I don't know why God kept me here, but honestly, just do the right thing. Don't let anything bother you. As a matter of fact, man, my last study yesterday, I was thinking, you know, because I do everything online. Yesterday, I learned that almost every disease, every disease known to man is from stress. So why stress yourself? Well, you look pretty good for a guy who's died twice, George. So I know, right? Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, folks, I know you've seen this guy and he's done plenty of interviews. But this time I had to pull, I had to push some buttons and we saw the, 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 the lion come out a little just a little bit, you know, he's, and I, I totally agree with him that stress is what's going to kill you. So let's all be smart. Um, this is no joke. We got almost 80,000 people dead just here in the United States. Uh, for those morons and imbeciles that are saying this is a hoax and all that stuff, they just, please don't listen to those idiots. Let be me say one thing, Sure. you know, King, and not, not many people like really, I don't know why they're not saying this to people. You know, my wife being a medical director, uh, she's connected to everybody, the CDC and stuff. Oh, you know what I need to tell people? You know what? Maybe it's not really that bad of a virus, you know, for somebody that there's nothing wrong with them. You get it? Maybe influenza is even worse. You're right. We all know SARS was really bad. The different people should know that this virus is very smart. It is part of SARS. But when somebody has SARS, with matter in the matters of hours, you'll know this guy is sick, freaking fevers, coughing. You need to quarantine him. The problem with this, it's a very smart virus. So you'll carry it in your throat for two weeks, right. infecting other people that you might be carrying in, in love, like your mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, and uncle and aunt. You could kill them without even knowing you did it. So that's why it's very tricky, you guys. And that's why you got to stay home. There you go. Last word from Bulletproof, from the Procreator. No, no excuse me. The what, what, please. The, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. Just George. The Pro Maker. The Pro Maker, or as he likes to call himself, the Guru. Oh boy. Okay, the Guru. All right. So thank you, George. I really appreciate it. Uh, this thank was an you, awesome bro. interview. We got some. Please stay in touch. Love to the family. Love to the fam. I love you guys all. Please. Like he said, the most important thing is stay focused, stay positive. Take care. And how do we end it? As always, peace.